From the 1st of January, independent television throughout the south of England has been in the grip of the new ITV companies. Plymouth, TSW, has been replaced by West Country Television, Southampton's TVS by Meridian, London's Thames by Carlton, and TVAM by GMTV. In other words, the largest shake-up of the commercial sector since it was set up in the 50s. Most of these companies won their franchises from the government by bidding higher than their rivals, but they still all promised to deliver quality programming as well as revenue to the government and profits to the shareholders. Mark Lawson has been tuning in to see how they're doing. Happy New Year! And welcome to West Country, your new ITV station for the Southwest. Good luck, Meridian. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Charlie, we love you. <laughs> Head over heels tonight at nine on Carter. Hello and welcome to Goodnight Television. Coming up later in this item, how to get those irritating stains of seriousness out of an ITV schedule. Mark? Thanks, Mark. And in our money box slot, we'll be looking at how ITV companies will manage to pay hugely inflated sums to the Treasury for the privilege of broadcasting. Mark? Thanks, Mark. And explaining why, for the first time, the viewing public may be about to. Mark? Thanks, Mark. Bloody well get what it bloody well wants. Thanks, Mark. But let's first check in with our sister station, Good Morning Television, GMTV. Morning, and welcome to a tremendous Tuesday. And stand by your phones, because we'll be making that wake-up call very soon. You will need the buzz-off words if your phone suddenly starts ringing. And they are, I'm sure you know them by now, I'm shaking up and waking up with Britain's brightest breakfast bunch. And uh, part of the bunch this morning is Ramsey Street's Brad Scott Michelson. Good morning. TVAM, the station's predecessor, became the most extreme example of the historical gap between what a company puts on paper to win the franchise and what it puts on screen to gain the viewers. Its catchphrase began as... Our mission to explain. But was soon... When I was off, they switched off. Simple as that. <laughs> GMTV, though, deliberately began where TVAM had ended up. In fact, it must be a painful irony for the much-mocked TVAM that its replacement borrows the same format indeed one of the same presenters in Lorraine Kelly, but drops it a few more notches down market. It's time to find out the answer to Jeremy Beadle's Today's the Day quiz. More importantly, to find out whether you've won in a moment today's winners. First, the answer from the man himself. Hi. Carlton, which conquered Thames for the London weekday franchise, also seems to avoid the risk of going down market later by aiming low at the outset. Its programmes include a version of that reliable newspaper circulation razor, How to Improve Your Sex Life. Why don't women take the initiative more often? Top reason was, I can't be bothered. London Tonight, the hour-long regional news show, also takes its style from tabloid newspapers, as can be seen from the language of its captions. Oh, I thought, hold on, black car, security van, fire at me car, black crash on me, and I thought, something's gone wrong. What Carlton has proved best at so far is not programming, but packaging, the promotion of its own name. One of TVAM's emergency innovations was to broadcast as many birthday greetings to viewers as possible, thus giving the audience a self-interest in watching. Carlton also cleverly allows its viewers 15 seconds of fame. This is Carlton. This is Carlton Television for London. This is Carlton Television for London. The new schedules do, though, have their blessings. Carlton might have cruelly placed its new current affairs show against the ratings power of EastEnders, but the first documentaries presented by Storyline have been decently serious. There are many descriptions amongst former colleagues of his that he was covered in dust. He looked like a flower grader. He had the dirtiest job in the factory. That does not sound like a clean factory. I cannot comment on Mr Bellini's case individually. I have passed information to you from Dr Llewellyn with regard to Mr Bellini's circumstances. He was so unfortunate as to develop a cancer of a type occurring all too commonly in the general population and never regarded as in any way linked with occupation in the chemical industry. The only worry was that the early shows were so reliant on the glue of human misery to hold the story together. 
It was a price worth paying for the investigation made there, but will the show also tackle more abstract subjects in which the wrongs are more equivocal, the victims less sympathetic? Storyline Thames' predecessor this week once made a programme called Death on the Rock. But it should also be said that Meridian has made a promising start as supplier of drama to the ITV network. Class Act, a quick-wit, quick-change vehicle for Tracy Ullman and Meridian shareholder Michael Palin, was confident enough to send up one of Granada's most famous documentaries. <laughs> When I'm 27, I shall marry someone who reminds me of Nanny. And um, I want a little baby, a little fat little baby. And I'm going to leave everything to my children so they can follow in my footsteps and enjoy the privilege it is that I, that I had. And even Carlton's London Tonight breaks one piece of worthwhile new ground for British television. Bill Clinton promised that his cabinet would, in its racial and gender mix, look like America, while Carlton's news programmes are the first two in this sense, look like Britain. The pressure caused by a minor gas explosion threatens to destabilise the whole building, leading to a domino-style collapse. The man behind me took a chance and lost. He's just been tested positive for drinking and driving. Hello, and in this week's High Five, the latest looking glasses. The problem is that the content of this and so much of the new ITV schedule looks like America. Welcome back. Still to come, Naomi Campbell. And also in our usual look at entertainment in the capital, an interview with Jason Connery. First, however, we return to tonight's top story. What you're seeing on the screen is a product of brutal financial necessity. In the past, ITV franchises were awarded for the payment of a fixed annual fee to the Treasury. The successful company decided on quality of programming proposals. The Thatcher government, however, saw an opportunity to, as the old TV catchphrase went, double their money. So look at it this way. TVAM, after its move down market, became Britain's most profitable television station making annual profits of £24 million, for which £7 million was paid to the Treasury. But GMTV, its replacement, must pay £34 million a year, plus 15% of revenue. That's seven times as much. The successful Thames used to pay £21 million, but Carlton has promised to provide £43 million a year, plus 11% of revenue. This means that what you are seeing is Britain's first truly commercial television. You may have thought that ITV was commercial, but in fact its vulgarities were strictly controlled. In that sense, ITV was an extension of the old BBC idea of television as a supply market rather than a demand one. Liz Howell, director of programmes for GMTV, made a recent statement which seemed to announce the arrival of demand television. The public will get what the public bloody well wants. In fact, this apparent note of defiance hides a tone of desperation. The old quiet understanding that the profits from ITV companies were civilly divided between treasury, shareholders and programme makers has now gone, with a minimum requirement of making their companies